Hey guys, this is Admiral Seabass, Eastern Pact, turn number two in my solitaire game here. Here's the victory points heading into the second turn. All the uh, cyber uh, warfare points reset. Russia used three of their four on geopolitical influence, um, wanting to uh, try to boost an effort for Argentina-Chile. That cyber attack failed, as did their diplomacy role for Argentina-Chile. Caliphate put three of their four points into Cyber Criminal, trying to get more money. All three of those failed as well. Uh, their geopolitical influence, uh, or their diplomatic influence, was in Central African states. That failed. China put four of their five cyber uh, attack or warfare points into geopolitical influence. They got one success there, which means they needed to roll five or six in their diplomacy attempt against uh Indonesia that also failed so not a great start here for the eastern pact on turn 2 continuing with our eastern pact turn number 2 we did um technology and uh you know it doesn't continuing with our game here eastern pact turn number 2 we did um fund research projects which is basically technology in this game and uh, China paid for two attempts, and the Russians paid for one. The Russians failed on theirs, but China succeeded on one of theirs. And they got this thing called Artificial Islands, which if you look in the rules, and this is a special one for China, nobody else can get this. What this means is, what this represents is Artificial Islands that boost their defensive capabilities. So all their anti-ship ballistic missiles now get a plus now attack at one better for the rest of the game. So they now attack at five instead of four. That may change China's purchase. They might, um, with this Western allied fleet here threatening Japan and uh, the Chinese coast, they may buy an anti-ship ballistic missile or two this turn uh, to bolster their ability uh, to fend off those attacks. So that was pretty cool. Uh, so now we'll go on to placing factory orders. Okay, rounding out the planning phase for the Eastern Pact on their turn, too. Russia bought two infantry, two main battle tanks, and a fighter. And I really agonized on the fighter versus two more main battle tanks. But let me tell you why I chose the fighter. Um, if you look over here, uh, let me see. Let's see here. Without destroying everything, just knocked Philippines over. U.S. has an airborne infantry here. That can move four. But it can't move through a zone where there's a fighter. But it could go one, two, three, four into North Yakutia, which is a victory star. But if I have a fighter here and a moor, I'm blocking all airborne movement, um, airborne assault movement deeper into Russia. So I'm going to place that fighter there. Um, now, that probably just means that the U.S. will have to choose, or the Western Allies will have to choose between hitting Japan or trying to take out these... Uh, Far East territories here for Russia, but I do want to put that choice upon them. So, um, China also bought a fighter. They lost two in the first uh, turn, so they need to replenish. They bought four infantry and airborne and two anti-ship ballistic missiles because they want to have a, enough to fire at all of their ports, um, which they have... One, two, three, four, five, six in their starting home territories. So they can theoretically fire six a turn. So they want to be well stocked uh, in order to fire those. And remember, those now get plus one since they got the artificial island tech. So that's my thinking there on my unit purchases. Now we move on to combat movement. Now, as Eastern Allies, Russia in particular, plots their combat movement, I want to point out a couple of things that are really NATO really already has going for it. Here, notice that NATO has a carrier here with two fighters on it, and they have an LHD here with one fighter on it. Now, fighters from super carriers can scramble into um, combat in adjacent zones, land zones in particular. So these two fighters could both scram they could either scramble into Scandinavia, they could scramble into Denmark, they could scramble into Germany. All right. That means wherever Russia chooses to attack between those three places, NATO can scramble those two fighters. Fighters, however, cannot scramble from LHDs. 
down here. So you couldn't scramble this into, say, Greece or the Balkan states or Italy. So keep that in mind when you're basing your fighters. And this NATO force here is super strategic in its location. So now Russia is sort of thinking, I might want to go after that supercarrier if I can. They're, I'm not sure they can, but uh, they might want to. They can't get these ships through the Denmark Straits here because NATO controls both. So that may be playing heavily into the minds of the Russians here is this supercarrier is a massive threat to further conquest of Germany. Uh, but also, NATO holding both of these means they can't move their ships through here. Now, they might not want to do that anyway because they don't have a huge naval force. But they do have these fighters which can attack. So anyway, just keep that in mind. It's a really neat feature. And uh, whoever's playing the NATO player was really smart to put that super carrier right there where it could scramble into so many adjacent land zones. Okay, I think I've got my combats plotted. Um, this sub is going to move up here. He's going to fire a cruise missile and try to put a hit on that carrier for NATO there. That won't stop the fighters from scrambling, but long term I'm hoping to just take that carrier out. So that's one combat. And here's that cruise missile attack, hoping to take out that carrier. I think Russia has got to continually take Germany. You can't let NATO build up to seven infantry or five other units in Germany and really hope to, to really turn the tide here as Russia. So I think Russia has got to take that back, and they're going to put all those guys in. These tanks will move two in. This main battle tank will also move in. This drone will come in, and then these two fighters will come in, and they'll have one movement point left like that. Uh... NATO has an interesting decision to make here. If they scramble these two fighters, they might risk losing them. Um, NATO's only got a couple of meat shields here, uh, two infantry, and after that, you're into helicopters and tanks and then fighters. So um, it's an interesting choice. Let me think about it. The other complicating factor here is Russia's got these drones a drone and it can assign one to a main battle tank which can target select a main battle tank so that gets you even closer to, to hitting those fighters um, and those are so valuable I think to scramble into Scandinavia and Denmark especially that I'm not sure NATO really wants to risk that you know I just don't know you know given that I probably can't finish this game anyway Let's just err on the side of mayhem here and go ahead and scramble those guys in. Okay, so down here, uh, we're going to take in two infantry, a drone, an attack helicopter, and uh, this is a somewhat speculative attack. Um, let me think for a minute. We'll fire a cruise missile from this Russian sub into this attack as well. And I know down here in Turkey, which has four infantry defending, so Turkey's slightly stronger. We're going to take this MBT, these two guys, this Caliphate drone. Definitely want one Caliphate fighter down here. From this airbase, Caliphate's going to fire a cruise missile into here as well. Um, Russia can fire another cruise missile from there. So there's that. Now the question is, where does this Caliphate fighter go? Um, I think I'll take him into Balkans right there, like that. Okay, so down here, um, oh, you know what? This tank was going to go one two into here and then I needed one of those other fighters didn't I yeah I did so I'll take the fighter out of I'll take the fighter out of the Balkans he'll come into here but I'll take the other Russian cruise missile will come into here 
into the Balkans. And then I'm going to take, take one Caliphate Infantry into there and I will chip him out. All right, there we go. Caliphate has one and one cruise missile only left. They're going to fire it into here, hoping to take out that next gen for the Pacific Coalition. Um, we are going to make the border attack into uh, South Korea to try to thin some of that out. And then I think the big thing we're going to attempt is to take Okinawa. We can't, I don't think we can take Taiwan. I think uh, the U.S. moved too much stuff in there to get it, but we're going to try to take out Taiwan. So we've got, uh, wow, okay. We got two fighters, a drone. Move this carrier out of the way. An attack helicopter. Um, two airborne. And then go ahead and take these two. They'll hop onto the LHD and they will get off as well. And then um, over here, our last attack is going to be, if we can take these LHDs out, then the Western Allies are in serious trouble in terms of taking back Japan or anything else in this region. So, um, one, two, three subs, let me move this back a little bit, are each going to fire a cruise missile. So, it's one Russian cruise missile. Coming down to here, and then two Chinese cruise missiles. They get fired from these subs. So we're hoping to take out one or two of those LHDs with target select would be super awesome. Okay. Uh, oh, and then way up here in Alaska, Russian, that Russian sub at the top left of your screen will fire a cruise missile into there like that and uh, try to take out that airborne infantry. All right, that is it for our combat movement. Okay, let's resolve these combats. Uh, first, this Russian sub fired this cruise missile attack against these NATO ships. That's a hit, but not a target select. So NATO will choose the frigate as a casualty. Okay, this is the battle for Germany. So first we're gonna roll for Russia's infantry. And there's, there's seven infantry there. So seven at two or less yields two hits. So <clears throat> per the rules, NATO has to apply those casualties immediately. So they will take their two infantry. Okay, and then, oh wow, I gave uh, the NATO attack helicopters to the Russians. That wasn't a good thing was it? So now uh, I'll do the two fighters for Russia and they're at six or less. And there's one more hit. So NATO will take an attack helicopter like that. And then I've got three MBTs but one of them has the drone. So I'll go ahead and roll the two that don't have the drone first. Ouch, they both missed, and then I get to roll two dice for the one that does have the drone, and he gets a hit. So NATO will take another attack helicopter. Like that. Okay, now I'll roll for the NATO infantry, and that's two at four or less. So, one hit. So I'll go ahead and move those from the board all together and we'll take one Russian infantry. Then I've got three NATO attack helicopters at four or less. They have target select one. Oh, there's two general hits, not a target select though. So I'll go ahead and remove those guys from the board. Russia loses two more infantry. 
two NATO main battle tanks at six. There's two more hits. So there's two more infantry from Russia. And then two NATO fighters at six or less. <laughs> and there's two more hits. Uh, wow, NATO rolled pretty well, didn't they? So that's both Russian infantry gone. And now, I think if you're Russia, you retreat. So they will, although if they stay, I'm hitting a lot of high value units. I can build stuff in central Poland or central Europe, which is here. If I don't take Germany, uh, you know what? It's a short game. Let's just carry on. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Uh, that was a, that was incredibly good rolling from NATO. All right, round two. Two Russian MBTs at six. There's two hits and one target select. So the target select... We'll take that guy, and the regular hit will be applied to that guy. Now I've got a Russian MBT with a drone. He can select his best roll, and he rolled a target select. So I'm glad I stayed, right? I mean, I might get punished, but... Now I've got the two Russian fighters at six or less. Oh, there's two more hits. Probably a good thing I stayed. So both these Russian, these NATO fighters are going to get lost too. Okay, so now NATO has the attack helicopter at a four or less. That's a miss. So he's gone. Two NATO main battle tanks at six. Oh, two misses. See, the dice can come back around on you. That is for sure. And then. Make sure you can still see. I got the two NATO fighters here at six or less. Only one hit. So, Russia has taken Germany back. I know you guys are probably screaming on there. Stay in the fight! Stay in the fight! So, uh, Russia takes back Germany. Put the German round on there. I'll take that and put it on the Russian dashboard. And we'll resolve these like that. And then Russia, let's see, that's plus one and minus one. And then we've got Russia up to 33 and NATO down to 27. Like that. Okay. Now, I'm going to, uh, I realized last night, by the way, that, no, never mind. So I'm going to resolve these, this battle. I'm not going to do it on the battle board. I'm just going to resolve it and then I'll let you know what happens. Bad news for Russia. Um, they weren't able to get a single hit. They were, uh, sorry, that's not accurate. They were able to get a hit with their cruise missile attack. But their infantry and their uh, attack helicopter couldn't get a single hit. Uh, so Russia cannot do these small uh, attacks against NATO because of the two-round limit. Uh, it just does not work. You have got to go in force <clears throat> into NATO territories to ensure that you can take them out in two rounds. Uh, these small attacks <clears throat> just typically do not uh, work out at all. So uh, now let's see what happens over here in Turkey. Well, again... Uh, Russia took it, or the Eastern Pact took it, but barely. Uh, they had one. And I tell you, NATO's been rolling really good with their infantry uh, this round. But still, um, they took it with uh, one MBT. So that's another two and two. It's not a victory star, though. But that is Russia up to 35, and NATO's all the way down to 25. So that is good. I'll leave that fighter there and the drone there and move it back during non-combat. Um, let's resolve that battle.
Okay, Pacific uh, Coalition lost this uh, territory. That's Somalia. Lost it to the Caliphate. So the Caliphate has recaptured that. So I'll make that income adjustment. Okay, I'm actually going to resolve these cruise missile strikes against the uh, American fleet before I resolve Okinawa or the Korea battle. Because I want to know what I'm dealing with here. So this is three at three. And I got no hits. So that was disappointing. Dice has not really been in the Eastern Pack's favor on this particular turn. I mean, I guess you would expect maybe not getting a hit there. Um, well, I should say you would expect to get a hit there, I think, uh, over 50% of the time. That's three dice at three. Probably looking at, what, 60, somewhere in the 60 to 70%. Uh, probability range. I don't know. I haven't done the math, but uh, Okinawa should be pretty simple. I mean, um, Western Allies have two infantry defending, so I'm just going to resolve this off screen and let you know what happens. Okay, as expected, uh, Western Allies didn't put up much of a fight on Okinawa. They didn't even get a casualty. So Okinawa is captured by China, and that puts China up one, and they puts the Civic Coalition down one. So NATO and let's look at the income chart here before we do the Korea battle because uh, Eastern Pac's really doing well here income wise. Um, I mean, China's still lagging the US, but you know, Russia has made significant gains and NATO and Pacific Coalition are way down there at 25. Okay, so now um, with the North Korea attacks, you do one, because of this border here, you can only do one round of combat. So we're just going to try to thin out as much as we can down here over one round. And uh, I'll let you know what the result is. Okay, you know what? I forgot that in the rules it says that defending land units get a plus two on the first round of combat. So I'm not going to do this. It doesn't make any sense to do it if they got... I mean, all these infantry <laughs> are going to be uh, defending at six. So uh, that doesn't make any sense uh, to me to even attempt that. I think it's just a detente situation here. You don't want to fall behind, you know, what your opponent's doing. But uh, anyway, yeah, I, I'm not going to do that attack. I'm going to take that back uh, after having had a look at the rules again. So that's it for uh, combat for turn two Eastern Pact. Okay, here's where things stand after Eastern Pack turn two strategic movement. I wasn't able to do anything with Venezuela. I have pretty much given up on South America as the Eastern Pact. Um, wasn't really able to do much up here either. I mean, I just got nothing in behind these Russian units um, that have been try trying to take out NATO. Um I landed one of the Caliphate fighters in Israel. I landed the other one over in Iran, Pakistan. I moved the helicopter from Israel to Iran, Pakistan. I landed the drone in Iran, Pakistan. Moved a Russian unit down from Kazakhstan into Iran, Pakistan. Um, China airlifted uh, infantry into Japan. Moved another infantry up to East China. Moved the drone. Landed one of the drones down in uh, Southeast Asia. Uh... Russia moved a guy up from South Ikudia to Amur. So now we're ready for place units. So let's do that. And let's see if we can stay live here while we do that. So Russia is definitely putting one of their fighters here in Amur. And then um, they've got two MBTs and two infantry. So they want to place those over here, maybe both in Central Europe. Um, definitely want to put both of my MB... Now that's a captured land zone, so I can only produce one <clears throat> in a captured land zone. So that's bad. So... Uh, you know what? I think I'm going to land both of these fighters back up here. I realize I could do that. 
and I'll build one of the infantry. No, I'll build a main battle tank there in Central Europe. I'll land the drone back in Central Europe. I forgot to do that. But, and then I'll build, uh, I'll build one of the infantry here in Baltic States. No, I'll build one of the infantry there in Central Belarus. Actually, I'll build both of them there and then I'll build my other main battle tank there as well. Let me grab that main battle tank and throw it in there. Russia's had a pretty <clears throat> tough go, <clears throat> surprisingly so for me, so far uh, in this game. All right, let me think about China, and then I'll come back to you in terms of unit placement. So China's airborne will go here in South China. Uh... The fighter will go down here in Southeast Asia. No, <clears throat> actually the fighter will go in East Asia. Like that. I'll add two more ASBMs to their dashboard. <clears throat> so those just go in their dashboard. I'm doing that off camera. And then China has four infantry, so we'll put one in Japan. Can only build one in a conquered territory. I will put one here in East China. We'll put one here in North Korea, which will be down here in the... Hang on just a minute. I gotta... right, my camera was really right over the North Korea blow-up box. And then um, we'll put one down here in Southeast Asia, like that. And now I've got the Caliphate. And they got a bunch of infantry. Six, in fact. So I need to grab some chips and tell you where I'm going to put them. All right. I'm going to put one in Israel. So that's going to go in the blow-up box. That gives me three infantry and a fighter in Israel. That's a victory star, so I want to protect that. I'll put one down here, South Africa Coalition, another victory star. So I want to protect that. And then I'm going to put two in Central Caliphate. And then I'm going to put the last two there in Iran, Pakistan. Like that. All right. So that is it for unit placement. So now we're going to collect income. And I'll probably just do this off camera. But again, China's going to get 40. Russia's going to get 35. And the Caliphate will get... 19. All right, that does it for Eastern Pack turn number two. Thanks, everyone. Take care.